Hi everyone, so in this video I'll show you how to set up your custom GitLab server inside a Docker container. So for that you need to first look for the GitLab Docker image. If you go and search GitLab Docker Hub and then you can click on the first link GitLab Docker images and here you can see this is the GitLab user on the Docker Hub and this is the GitLab edition on the Docker Hub. This is the community edition and we will be playing with it but if you are going to set up the enterprise edition uh, the docker commands and steps will remain the same what i'll do is that i'll switch to my terminal and i'll run a command docker run gitlab slash gitlab ce this will actually run the gitlab uh, container this will actually first download the docker image the gitlab image gitlab docker image from the docker hub and then it will run that image as a container but since the container is running on the port 80 by default and if we need to access that container port on our host machine we need to do port mapping from our host machine to the container so for that i'll do the port mapping dash p on the host side i'll try to access it access it on port 8000 and inside the container that is the fixed port which you can change but we'll stick to the default one for now so that is port 80. Once you run this command docker run with the gitlab ce community edition this could take around five minutes for setting up the docker container but if you are running this command for the very first time on your machine first it will try to download the docker image for the gitlab from the docker hub which could also take maybe around five or ten minutes depending on your network speed the docker image is around 1.5 gigs you can see it here from the tags you can check it here this is 1.3 the latest gitlab docker image is 1.3 gigs so first it will download this image and then it will run that docker run command but since i was playing with it and i had this docker image for the gitlab on my host machine already it actually didn't download it again and it just simply run that so now we will wait for five minutes and then we will see how it goes so when you try like for after four or five minutes you will see this 502 response this means that the container is actually running everything is fine with the gitlab container but the gitlab server inside that container is not ready yet to accept connection if you see the screen that this is a good sign that your container is up and running but the gitlab server is not ready yet to accept connections so when you retry after one or two minutes you can see that the gitlab server is loaded this is loaded on the local host 8000 while the GitLab server is running inside this container. I can show you this in a separate terminal. If you open a new terminal and do a docker ps-l, you can see this is the container which is running the GitLab image, community edition. It took around five minutes to up and healthy. And you can see the port mapping is from 8000 to 80. If you want to log into this GitLab server, the default user is root. This is uh, what the GitLab is automatically setting. But to get the password, you need to run a simple Docker command. What I'll do is that I'll copy this container ID and I'll do uh, also remember that the Docker container is running here, which is running the GitLab server. So I'm trying this command in a separate uh, Ubuntu terminal. <coughs> so I'll copy this container ID. I'll try Docker exec dash it container ID, cat, etc. GitLab initial password. So what I'm doing is that I'm <coughs> trying to execute a command which is this cat command on this container which is the running container id so i am trying to run this cat and then this way this will actually print the contents of this file this file is coming from the container which container the id which i am using here uh, sorry actually the path is a root password initial root password and when you try this cat command in the container you can see the password is uh, printed here i'll just go and copy this command and i'll try the root username and the password here I'm logged into the GitLab server which is running on my host machine. What I'll do is that I'll now try to set up just um, a test project. I'll go to create a project, create a blank project. I'll give it a dummy name. The default root user is coming here. If you later add more user, you will see all the users here. Uh, so I'll go to the root. I'll keep everything as it is. Now you can see uh, the repository is created. What if I stop this container? Uh, you guys can see this container is running here, the GitLab one, but what if I stop docker stop now this container is stopped you can see the logs are not coming here and if I refresh this I'm not seeing anything for any reason uh, I didn't want the container to be up and running I, I tested something and now it's fine to stop it now maybe after a few days or some time I want to restart that same GitLab server so since I have that container ID already if you don't have you can do a docker ps-a and you can see <coughs> all the containers including start ones and the running ones so you can get the GitLab container ID and you can try docker start dash, dash attach and then the container ID. What will the attach do that it will actually continue to 
put the logs in the same terminal so you can run their same command again and you can see since the GitLab server is stopped and to up the GitLab server it takes a couple of minutes so we are waiting for a minute or two and then you will see once it's up I did wait for a minute or two you can see the GitLab server is up again I'm trying to log in with their same root user and password. You can see the repository is still there as it was before. Now the container logs are coming in this uh, tab of the terminal. I'm going to close this terminal. Previously, you guys saw that I stopped that container and when I restart it, everything was there. Now, what if I actually remove this container? I'll try docker ps dash L. I'll go and copy this container ID. To remove a container, you first need to stop it. So I'll do docker stop and then I'll run docker rm for remove that same container ID. And now you guys can see here, and the logs are not coming if i do docker ps i am not seeing my GitLab container here and if i go to the browser nothing is loading i'm going to rerun that uh, same command which i did for the first time to start the GitLab container again and i'll try docker run dash p 8000 is my host port 8800 is the container port and GitLab slash GitLab GitLab dash c is GitLab. So this will take another four or five minutes to start it again. I'm trying is to show you guys if I remove the container, like if, if we stop the container and we restart it, the repositories were there. And the username password as well was also there because we reuse that same password for login. Now if I remove the container completely, like for stop it and then remove it, I want to see if the repository is still there or if the repository is removed. So now you guys can see the GitLab server is loaded. As you may remember that I have actually saved this password. So I'm trying to log in with that same username and password. So the first thing you notice is that the password is not working now because we removed the container. And since the password was actually saved inside the container, that password is lost. So I'll try that same command to get the initial root password in a separate terminal. I'll copy this same password and paste it in the password field. So now I'm logged into the GitLab server, but it says 404. This 404 is actually for the to-do repository which we created before. So this means that the repository is lost. What is the solution? The solution is we want to, when we run the container, uh, it actually saves that container data in a, in a directory, in two different directories. One where it saves the users and the password and secrets, and the other is where it saves the actual repositories and all the commits and everything. So we need to actually make those two directories persistent from the container into the host machine so what we'll do is that when we run the container we will mention actually two different paths one for the user data and one for the repositories that will be actually mounted mounted from the container into the host machine so later even if we remove the container and we want to run the container again build the container again we will actually mention that uh, volumes though that that those persistent data paths to the container that okay you are running this container but you need to use these paths inside the container for these paths so these are actually two different paths actually i'll show you uh, through a command i'll copy the container id i'll stop this container you can see the container is stopped here i'll rerun this same container but with two new paths i'll run the same container on that same port but this time i'll mention that what i want to make it what i want to make persistent from the container to the host machine so for that you can see this is dash v dash v mean volumes which volume do you want to use inside the container so this gitlab is actually the path on my host machine right in this directory and i'm using a subdirectory called config which will be mapping to etc gitlab inside the container everything inside the container under this directory will be available on my host machine under this directory even if i remove the container so next time when i want to run the same container i'll again mention these paths what will this command do that it will actually use these same paths this one and this one and will copy it to the container so these are two different paths one is for the configurations the user secrets and all those ssh keys and this is the other one for the actual data which is the gitlab slash data but inside the container the path is var opt gitlab when i run this command i'll see two different directories under my this directory one is the gitlab config and the other is the gitlab data so i'll try this command there should be two new uh, one new directory and the name of with the name of GitLab and there should be two different subdirectories. So you guys can see here the GitLab directory is created and then if I check the GitLab directory I can see the config and the data. These were the two different paths we mentioned to the docker run command. I'll bring that docker run command again. So you guys can see GitLab config. So this is GitLab config 
and then it was GitLab data. So this is the GitLab data. So this data is actually persistent now on my host machine because containers could be deleted, could be stopped, uh, but the data should be persistent if you need it. So next time when you run the Docker run Docker container, you can just mention these paths that please use these two paths or one path or could be multiple for the data inside the container. So now the GitLab server is up. I'll go and get the username. Uh, the I'll go and get the password from running a Docker command. So first I'll do Docker ps l. Copy the container ID. Docker exec. Copy the password and put it here and log in. Now what I'm going to test is that <coughs> I'll create one new project then I'll stop the container, remove the container and then I'll recreate the container with those volumes path and we'll confirm that the repository I'm creating now should be available later even if I delete the container and rerun it. The repository is created here. Now we need to confirm two things. One is this repository should be there as it is after we remove the container and recreate and restart the container and I should be able to log in with that same password like before when we had to delete or stop the container and recreate we also need to get the new password but this time since we have uh, made the things persistent we should be able to see everything as it is the project and the root password so I'm going to stop this container and now I'm going to remove this container so now you guys can see uh, I don't have any GitLab container running so now I'll run that same run command again if we have deleted everything we don't see any GitLab container and I'm running that same run command at 1080 we are mounting these volumes if we don't mount, if we don't mount these volumes or repositories and passwords are lost if we want to retain everything as it is we need to mount these during the run command so I'll retry this command so the container is running and the server is also running I'm trying to log in with that same user and password and I, sh I should be able to log in without getting the root password again by using the docker command since we have made the data persistent I'm logged in with that same root password and the data is also available <coughs> and the repository is also available here. Uh, this was actually the basic idea how to run the GitLab server in a Docker container, how to run it on a specific port, what if we stop the container and rerun it, we should have everything as it is but if we remove the container we will lose everything including repositories and user data. So if you want to make the data and user data and the repositories data, pers data persistent, you need to create volumes and mount it uh, between the container and the host machine. Now you guys, you guys have noticed that we run too many commands like the docker run, docker stop, docker rm, then uh, docker with volumes. If all these, if, if all these commands seems too much to you guys, uh, then docker compose is the solution. So to combine all these commands under just one file or maybe under just one command, just do uh, up and down and things should be up and then should be running or uh, destroyed. Then you guys need a Docker Compose. So in the next video, I'll show you how to set up uh, a GitLab server, which is running in a Docker container, but managed by a Docker Compose. So see you guys in the next video.